Today, I want to share a quick tip for DaVinci Resolve for those who are using the text-based editing features, along with um, multi-cam clips or clips that you want to sync on the edit page using the automatic, you know, syncing feature. A little bit of a niche case, um, but something I haven't seen other people explicitly talk about, but I use it all the time in my workflow. Super useful, it might be useful for you too. But first things first, these text-based editing features um, are studio only. So DaVinci Resolve Studio, the paid version, you need that to get access to these features. So if you don't have the studio version, feel free to stick around, uh, find out some cool stuff about the features behind the studio version. Or um, if you're not interested at all in studio version, why not check out my last video where I uh, break apart an included free template in the Fusion page to sort of kickstart your learning process there. Um, it's a pretty cool way to start, you know, exploring the Fusion page and also no one watched that video. So. Um, you probably haven't seen it. But if you want to stick around, thank you. Uh, but let's dive in. Uh, I've got an empty timeline here and I've got two video clips. These are uh, the two clips I recorded for my last video. So if I drag this first in, it is my OBS recording. Um, I do record with two audio tracks normally. Only one of them has audio this time. Um, so if I get rid of that, I can drag in my main face cam above it. And then real simple, I can select all of these, right click, go to auto align clips. I'm doing this off waveform. We are syncing and then that will run and just sort of snap these into place so that they are all synced up. Um, now I do only use my OBS audio for this, so I'll click that second one, uh, disable that, and, and we can start getting to work. Now, um, in between the last few clips I recorded, um, I did test out something new with my workflow um, and it worked, but I found some pros and cons. So this actually video will actually be a little more in depth than I was planning. L let me show you what I recently found out. Turns out I hadn't quite revisited this text-based editing feature in a while. Um, so something really cool that I had totally missed is that I have this timeline, it is now synced up. And if I go back, find my timeline in my media pool, select that and click this button to open up text-based editing. Unfortunately, in my testing, I did already run this process. So it looked like it somehow like cached all this information, which is pretty neat, but you might have to wait for it to work through your clip. It's pretty fast when it does this, but you see this sort of timeline we're working with. You see these uh, gaps in speech represented by these dots. You see your actual transcription of everything you say. And since I did this right on the timeline, if I click this button to remove the gaps, it will actually go through and on my timeline, cut up everything on that timeline and squeeze it back together so now those dots are removed. And this is important. You will notice that now uh, this transcription is live off of this timeline. So you can see I also, um, uh, you know, repeat myself several times here at the beginning. I select that, I delete that, get rid of it, and that deletes those clips as well. And if I were to, you know, get more extreme, like cut off a big chunk here, um, if you select it, it also sets your in and out point in your timeline. Really cool, cool. If I would delete that, it would delete it. And I believe shrink it down. No, it wouldn't. Oh, except now there's a gap there. So now if I get rid of the gap, it'll shrink it back. Cool. If you appreciate videos like this, you should visit sterlingsupply.co. This is my website where you can download dozens of presets, plugins, and effects for DaVinci Resolve. Many of these presets are completely free. Several are paid premium products and website members also receive a bundle of those premium products along with exclusive extras like in-depth breakdowns of my newest presets. Why not check out Picture in Picture Pro, a drag and drop effect to shrink and mask any clip with advanced customization for shape, texture, and animation. My ongoing work is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. So this is live text-based editing. You can select some text, click this button to set a marker that it will be marker with a range. And even if you select something else, you can set another marker of a different color. This is a pretty good way to, to set these markers based on content, but um, hopefully you notice the immediate sort of like uh, downside of this. This is very cool. It's working live right on my timeline, but once I delete something, it's totally gone. I can't even review something I have deleted, right? I would have to like control Z all the way back. And that could be scary. So this can be efficient, but it can also be a little destructive. So if I get rid of everything here, close out those markers, everything, and let's just rebuild this scene. So real quick, I'm dropping these on here. I am syncing these up. Sync, and then I'm gonna select all of that, right click and make a compound clip. 
I'll just keep that default. And now it adds that compound clip back to my media pool, sort of as its own, you know, source file. You can open this compound clip on a timeline and edit around if you need to. Um, but back on my main timeline, now that is just a compound clip. And actually what I'm gonna do is completely delete this here because now back in that file where that compound clip is, if I run this tr transcription uh, feature here, it'll go through this process. It will initialize and then steadily go through. We can see it speeding along a little over 30 times real time. I could have done this on a smaller section of the video, but I can wait. This was even a little bit of a longer video. So like 30 times and it's got like a minute. It's like almost a 30, 30 minute video. You should go check out this video. And at first, you know, it looks the same. And at first it is the same. But remember, instead of now looking at a live timeline, we are looking at a clip in the media pool and the completeness of that clip or this compound clip will always remain whole. So if I do something, um, like just at first click this button to clear away all these gaps I've made instead of completely deleting them We just sort of get that strike through and we can even select these other bad takes I will click delete a strike through it strikes through those as well And at this point, you know, maybe you could select this first paragraph click this button to just load that individual section into my timeline It dropped it right here or even if I get rid of that I can select all and even though it selects those gaps if I click the button to drop this all onto my timeline, it won't actually import those gaps if they have been struck through. Now, at this point, if I go back, select these first few paragraphs, you don't get that selection on your timeline. So if I delete those, it will strike those through, but nothing on my timeline will change. So this is a little bit more of a process where um, you might want to spend more time going through the actual uh, text of, of your video and, you know, striking things out before dropping it on a timeline. But if you do, you know, strike something through and then maybe later you remember something you want, you can always go. I can right click, click this button to undelete. It will strike it back. And if I select that, um, use a few of these options down here. You have place on top, insert or append. So if I want to insert this right at the top, it will slide it in, push everything else down. Hey, editing Patrick, um, to talk about something I forgot, an important part of this step, um, a big pro of sort of summing these down to uh, compound clips and then running this process is that afterwards, if you want more control over those individual sources, you can select all of those and click, right click and decompose in place using clips. And that will give you all the tracks that you summed down. So you will still have that compound clip that you can go to and like bring new clips in, but it will bring those in as compound clips. And then if you want that individual control, you can um, run through that process uh, to decompose in place. So you have full access to all of your tracks. They will stay synced up, um, but you can have the benefit of, of bringing that sort of stacked information, multiple tracks at once um, through one round of, uh, of this text-based editing, this transcription feature. Hopefully you can start to see the pros and cons of this system. That first example of editing inside a timeline, super flexible where you can um, especially select in and out points and mark them. If I do that here, it will actually create a marker uh, on that source video clip or the source, I guess, compound clip. But especially if you wanna like keep a record of everything in that clip entirely, then you can go around to this method where you make that compound clip once those clips are, are synced up. And if you need to, you can always go back, grab a different video clip, uh, especially you can search through this transcript as well. So that is very helpful for this kind of thing. And hey, uh, why not both? I am working here on this compound clip, but remember this compound clip lives on this timeline. And look, look little buttons up here. We have this like clip icon and then this timeline icon and boom, we can swap right to this timeline level where now I can select these. It will jump here. I can jump around. So even, hey, even a best of both worlds, if I go back to that clip, oh, you can do both at the same time. Even using a search and replace feature. I got familiar with this text-based editing feature um, when it first came out, but there were a number of like substantive updates that looks like I missed something. It's because this is pretty cool, especially jumping back and forth between uh, your individual clip and your timeline layer. If you want to work here, strike things out, get rid of those, then delete the gaps. Pretty nifty.
There are so many corners of Resolve, especially in the studio version, um, that, you know, they just add tons of value and it can be hard to miss if you don't circle back to it every once in a while. I'm sure even many people who have studio rarely use this feature because if they were up and working before it came out, um, they might have missed some of the really cool things, but especially hopping back between clip and timeline, that's pretty neat. I don't think I've ever talked about text-based editing outside of maybe um, when it was first announced, but clearly this is a cooler system even than what I was using it for. If you use DaVinci Resolve Studio, you've gotta let me know if you uh, you know, fully utilize this text-based editing feature. If you don't have Studio, um, is this a tempting feature? for you to dive in and maybe get studio. I do think for the right kind of workflow, this is a studio feature that you could use all of the time. I'd, I'd put this right alongside some of the cool uh, studio only audio features like that voice separation and voice isolation and that kind of thing. Magic Mask is cool, but you might not use it as often as like really, really functional stuff like this. This did kind of become a general uh, text-based editing feature, but don't forget um, that you can pair this up with syncing multicam clips very nicely. Whether that's making a compound clips of your sync source first, or just syncing them on a timeline and using that timeline only feature, it will sort of like cut through all your clips, so something to be aware of. But this whole system, super cool, really powerful. I think it's cool. Hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.